Hello everyone, this is Ross, Teacher Toolkit. I'm at home uh, in, in my spare bedroom <laughs> uh, where I, I blog and write. Uh, so this is where it happens. Uh, this is uh, my third video. It's uh, my kind of welcome to 2017, so happy new year to everyone who's listening. Um, after doing a live Periscope on Twitter last week, I thought I'd just take time to do a more in-depth video about people returning to school. I know some people are going back to school next week, um, but hopefully this can be used for when people attend inset days or are organizing their own inset days. So it's kind of like uh, 10 things to avoid when you're organizing or taking part and leading uh, inset days for staff training at schools. So the the first few that I want to go through are essentially um, things that people often don't consider. So the first one is housekeeping. Um, a lot of training days start with you know the program. Um, there's going to be a fire drill if you're attending a conference for the first time. Those kind of things. Uh, they're a waste of time. People know these things. Uh, they can read. They know the program. Yes, there's a few things that might, you know, when programs change, um, but don't make it laborious. Just a quick update and get on with it. Thirdly, most importantly, time and stick to them. Unless there's a significant delay, or, you know, an external speaker or, or something that someone's come to hear. But I'm talking about school insets here. Um, keep to timing, and if if you can, finish earlier than than planned, and, and, and let staff feel. Uh, that they have some time to go on and get on with their own stuff. So I'm talking about a typical training day here that you have at school. Um, don't keep staff behind, don't open it up for questions and one person raise their hand and ask the question. Let them deal with that in their own time and let staff go. Uh, thirdly, ask yourself, is your training day a training day or is it uh, an event or a meeting to get people together for information? If that is, then have a briefing and let people get on with the training itself. Um, Next one, fourthly, probably the, the one that irritates us all um, is a one-size-fits-all approach. You know, if it's a briefing, then one-size-fits-all is applicable. Everyone needs to be there. But um, the most significant CPD that I've been part of or I've helped organise is where it's differentiated and it's targeted and people have a choice. People can choose where they want to go. And when you're lucky enough to get out of school and go to a conference, uh, you choose your own... Uh, workshops and you go to things that are meaningful for your own professional development. Fifthly, the worst one of all is when you've got a PowerPoint and the presenter turns the back and reads from a screen and the text is either too small, it uh, doesn't look very appealing to, to uh, visually attractive, um, they've got a very dull voice, they're very uh, disengaging uh, and you're just you know ready to hit yourself in the head, it's painful. So if you're a presenter, please think of other ways to present your information, handouts, activities, get people on their feet. Uh, those things tend to work really well. If you are presenting or organizing something, think about um, how you will present your content. When people organize uh, video content, YouTubes, uh, sound clips, they often don't test it before they arrive. Um, have a backup plan. Make sure you've got a good connection if you're using the internet. There's nothing worse than waiting for something and then it turns on, it blares out and it, it gets on everyone's nerves. Or it's too quiet and you can't even hear it. Uh, it makes it a very frustrating place. Uh, number seven on my list, uh, acronyms. Education is full of acronyms. CPD, PDD, INSET. There's already three just for training itself. Uh, then you've got NQTs, SLTs, and we've got all these different acronyms. Schools come up with their own as well. Uh, so if you're presenting them to an audience that don't know the acronyms, uh, or if they're new members of staff, or you're going to a conference, make sure they're explained in, in a handout somewhere so that staff don't have to worry, people listening don't have to worry about what they mean. Um, Number eight, um, I've been really pleased to see on Twitter the last few weeks people try and bring and brag or, uh, or hashtag speed date in CPD, uh, an idea that I've, I've developed and used in my own uh, staff training that I've been organising for the last 10 years in, in my leadership positions. Give staff time the to talk. Staff love sharing ideas, so facilitate classroom ideas where staff have time to talk about what they do and let them have an opportunity to hear other people. Uh, if you present an idea, give staff to think, pair, share. It's a great classroom strategy. It's equally useful in staff training sessions. Um, my two last ones. Um, number nine, the environment. 
Um, there's nothing worse than drilling going on behind the scenes. The room's too hot, the room's too cold, the chairs are uncomfortable. Sometimes these things are out of your hands if you're in school, but in a conference setting, think about how you can make your guests a bit more welcome, um, have regular toilet breaks. Even if you're in your own inset day in, in school, let staff kind of move around, let them have a break, five minute break, bring them back. Don't, don't treat them like kids. Give staff time to be comfortable. And then the last one, number 10, uh, there's nothing worse than not, not feeding your staff. So make sure they're well fed and watered. It doesn't take, take uh, cost a lot of money. In, in my experience, it typically works out for a day, five pound per head. And that's enough to, to give staff a good breakfast and a hearty lunch. Uh, and you can, it's, it's a good enough budget. If you've got 100 teachers in your school, a large secondary school, that's a lot of money that you can use to feed staff and give them a wide selection of food and, and even a bowl of mints and some water on their table if they're going to be sitting in a room for, for most uh, uh, for an hour or two. Uh, so those are my 10 things to avoid stroke things to consider if you're organising a CPD session. I want to finish off with two shout outs. I've got a couple of books on my table. One is by Andrew Morris, so an experienced head teacher. Uh, this is his book, The Art of Standing Out, and it's about his own journey about school transformation, and it's a book that I was lucky enough to read and review, so I'd highly recommend you check that out if you haven't done so. That was my read from last year. And a new book that I've been lucky enough to be sent by Mary Myatt, um, Mary Myatt on Twitter. Uh, she's an HMI inspector, she's an RE lead, uh, this is our new book called Hopeful Schools and it's about building humane communities and it's a very uh, important topic in light of our current education landscape, the dialogue with you know accountability, working long hours, um, staff feeling very burnt out after a few um, weeks, months in the first term. Uh, so that's my new uh, book that I've got to read. Thank you, Mary, for sending that copy to me. Uh, and I recommend you all have a look at it. Um, funny, that's all from me. I've got man flu, so that uh, explains why I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, but uh, it's my third video. Please uh, share it with people. Like it, subscribe. Uh, give me some feedback. Give me some ideas, actually, of things you'd like me to talk about. Um, I I'm quite getting a bit more up for kind of sharing ideas here. Um, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful, uh, I'm getting the hang of this uh, and all the best for 2017 and I hope that your CPD uh, programs that you design your own schools or the conferences that you attend are more meaningful for you. Uh, my name's Ross, Teacher Toolkit, thanks for tuning in. Teacher Toolkit, one of the most followed teachers on Twitter in the UK. Find out more at teachertoolkit.me.